Hi guys, it's Kay from Cater. It has been a long time since I posted a video on my channel. Uh, happy 2021, it's a whole new year. I'm still in lockdown, so I've been doing a lot of gardening all winter, not posting any videos really about what I'm doing. After harvest last year, I just got busy. I was making tincture and chocolate and I bought a dab press. So I was pressing rosin. Um, what else was I doing? I grew, I had a little indoor grow. I was playing around with that. Um, and yeah, so here we are, and I'm getting ready for another outdoor grow season, and I just couldn't be more excited. It's my favorite time of year, and I guess we'll do what we did last year, and I'll walk you through it. I'm going to be doing a lot of things differently this year. So I'll be talking about that over the months. Um, I think we're always trying to optimize what we do and to get Oh, the best quality um, flower every year. Hopefully every year is better than the last. So I thought I'd start today in my greenhouse because it's raining outside actually. And um, yeah, I was going to start outside, but we'll start in the greenhouse uh, where you can see I have actually installed an HPS light. I had this indoors, but this type of lighting system is really hot and that's problematic indoors. It was perfect for the greenhouse. So I brought this out here, maybe February. Mm. And it really helped to warm the greenhouse up in the colder months so I could start some vegetable seedlings and just get a start on everything. I can do it indoors, but honestly, I just run out of space. I mean, I'm seeding hundreds of vegetable and flowers and things. So that's been really helpful. The other thing I did to make the greenhouse warmer, because really my ultimate goal is growing at least food year round outdoors. So probably mostly greens like spinach and kale and radishes and beets and cold weather plants. Um, but I really do need to warm the greenhouse up a bit because of the zone I'm in. It gets pretty cold. So this light has been great for that. Um, the other thing I do is I bubble wrap my greenhouse. And when I flip the camera around, I can show you. I've taken most of it down at this point because I don't need it. But I do have one panel still up. The other DIY thing that I did in an attempt to keep the greenhouse warmer was I took these uh, water bottles and I spray painted them black and filled them up with water. And the idea is that they'll warm up in the sun during the day and then we'll get some radiant heat overnight that will help um, with the temperatures. But it's typically 10 degrees warmer in here than it is outdoors, even in the winter. And of course it blocks all the wind, so not having the wind chill. Really when it comes to growing in here, it's about keeping the roots from freezing. Uh, so that leads me to what I did next, which is I installed a cold frame in my greenhouse. So it's like a mini greenhouse inside of a greenhouse. I filled it with dirt and I put actually a soil warming cable in there, which has a thermostat on it. So it'll turn on and off and that is going to warm the soil, you know, from the bottom up. That's going to keep the roots warm. Obviously I can close the lids, um, to further, you know, uh, keep everything warm. And then I can cover that with greenhouse plastic as many layers as I want. So then I'm getting really multiple layers of insulation and um, I'm really optimistic that this winter I'm going to get stuff growing in here year round. <clears throat> so the greenhouse was full of vegetables and I've really been focusing these last months on getting everything landscaped and planted for the colder months. I mean, the cannabis isn't going to go outside until, you know, really the end of June. And that's because they're photosensitive and we want to be careful that they're not going to get confused with 
lighting. So we can talk about that a little bit. If I put my plants outdoors right now, they're going to go into flower because they're going to feel a shift in, in the light change. Um, but what's going to happen is the days are actually getting longer, so they're going to flip into flower, but then they're going to get confused because ideally when they're in flower, the days are getting shorter. So um, they can hermaphrodite, they can revert, and just weird things can happen. So I really want to keep them on at least a 18.6 until I get them outdoors when the light is 12.12, which is around June 21st. So um, this is really helpful for that. I have this on a timer, so it comes on from 5 to 9 in the morning and then from 5 to 9 at night to supplement the light in here. Uh, and then on days like today, I can just turn it on um, just again because it's not a very sunny day today, so I'll just supplement the light. The other thing is, depending on the light and the time of day, it's adjustable, so I can turn it up or down. So right now I have it on a low setting. Uh, because it's still bright out, but I can turn it up. Also, if it's colder and I want it to be hotter, I can turn it up higher. So, yeah, we'll just leave it on a little bit brighter. Oh, maybe not. I'll turn it back. Ah. Okay. So, these are some things I did in the greenhouse. So, like I said, sometime when it's not raining, I'll take you outside and show you all the vegetable beds that I have um, planted. I really did a lot of landscaping this year because I had time to. I've been home. Um, so I had, you know, last year I was working a, a lot in, in February and March. And so this year I wasn't. So I was really able to really pimp my place out. I'm pretty excited to show it to you. So now as far as the cannabis goes. I still have everything in the greenhouse. These are really just uh, clones that I've made. So what I'm working with are clones from the strains of genetics that I've had for the past few years. So I have Alaskan Purple, Moby Dick, Godbud, I have some Frisian Duck, and Master Crush. I did have a couple of feminized seeds, so I planted those I didn't do tremendously well with my seeds this year for some reason. I only had a couple of feminized ones, and then I did some trades with some other growers, but I'm not really certain if they're gonna be um, femina fe female or not, so I have to keep my eye on those. Um, but the clones, of course, I know are going to be female. Now, obviously, I have a lot of plants here, and I always do this to myself where I get so many plants. So, um, this year my plan is to grow basically an equivalent amount of flower with fewer plants. And my feeling is, my experience is, with whatever footprint you have, you're going to grow the same amount of flower regardless. You know, you can have, you know, six really big plants or you can have 30 smaller plants. And, and this year I'm really going to go for less and more. So I'm thinking six, eight plants tops. Uh, but I'm really going to give them a lot of extra attention and love and and really um, see how that goes. So that's my plan. Um, a couple of issues I'm dealing with. So because I've been cloning, and you guys know that I've had problems in the past with powdery mildew. So once a plant has had powdery mildew, I find it's always susceptible to powdery mildew after that. So I'm making clones from plants that have had powdery mildew. So even though I'm treating them, I'm just finding that they're really like the slightest little bit it's appearing. Uh, the good news is I found a great product through my Instagram networking and it's called Lost Coast Plant Therapy. And I have to order it from the States, which makes it a bit expensive for me, but it is a really great product that pretty much takes care of powdery mildew, thrips, aphids, mites. It's just an all-in-one. It's organic. It's natural. You can use it on flowering plants, and that's been a lifesaver. So I actually just gave all these plants a treatment yesterday um, just because I really want to be proactive. I might also try doing the milk solution treatment preventatively this year, which I haven't done before much because I haven't found it to be really successful, but I think what I'm missing is that it needs to be in direct sunlight. And so I think 
on sunny days, really hot sunny days, I might start doing some of those treatments. Again, I'm gonna have fewer plants to manage, so also that should be helpful. So, that's where I'm at for this year. I've taken more clones, so I just did about another 20 clones from these, um, and eventually I'm gonna have to pick, you know, which eight plants I'm gonna go with. Uh, I do have a couple of new strains of genetics. I have some purple OG that I got on a trade. I have one AK-47 that is a feminine um, seed. I have some bag seeds that are, if they end up being female, I don't know, they'll be just kind of a, a surprise. So, but that's where I'm at so far with the season. So, um, what else? Let me think. Uh, I guess the other big thing that's happening in my garden this year is I'm going completely organic. So I'll be sharing that with you. Um, the short story is from my work at the aquaponics farm in the local food bank. I started bringing home fish water, so water from the farm to fertilize my plants with. And, um, and it just made a lot of sense to me. Obviously in the aquaponics farm, that's what we use to fertilize uh, the, the greens that we grow. So uh, I ended up a couple of months ago adopting a turtle. It was kind of a random thing and I set up a tank and turtles are pretty filthy animals as it goes. So I have to change the water quite a bit. And so I have been incorporating it into my gardening. In addition, I have a big bale of worm castings that I've had for a couple of years and I never really integrated fully in. So I'm um, adding that to all of the soil that I'm repurposing. I also bought some rabbit poop pellets from a lovely girl on Kijiji who has like a dwarf rabbit and she's feeding it organic food and it occurred to her to sell the poop, which I think is genius. So I bought a few bags of this um, from her and I've been adding that. And I have to say all the growth I've seen so far in the garden, everything's doing really well. So that's really exciting for me. So, um, so yeah, then I have my organic food. What else should I tell you guys? Um, I guess that's probably it for my plans for the garden for this year and where I'm currently at. <clears throat> so, um, I'm not exactly sure what I'll do with my scragglers. I might, I will probably bring some of them inside, uh, and otherwise I guess just distribute the other ones. I'm not really sure, but as usual, I have more plants than I need, so, which is a, a good problem to have. Um, all right. Well, I tell you what, I'll come back uh, the next time I have something to say. I guess I'll show you around outside. I am going to make some more clones today. Um, I'll run through it and then perhaps when I do it again, uh, I'll shoot a video on that. I just want to clean up some of these larger plants. And um, when I took clones earlier in the week, all I did was top all of my big plants because they hadn't been topped so it was just really easy i just snipped the tops off all of them and i'll get really nice uh, hardy clones from that but now i have to go down into some of the branches underneath and thin it out and as i'm snipping those off i'll want to be saving them and seeing if i can turn those into plants as well so that's what i'm working on today so like I said, I'll have to do it again. We'll see how today goes, and then uh, I can shoot a video on that. So, I hope you guys are all really excited for 2021. Um, having extra time in the garden is going to be the same kind of co uh, consolation as it was last year. It certainly was a lifesaver for me, and I'm really excited for this year uh, to just be the best ever. So... Uh, same as last year. Until next time, happy, healthy growing. Um, I hope that you are getting your gardens planned. And one of the other reasons I wanted to shoot this today was to give you a little inspiration and let you know, hey, come on, it's coming up. we got to start thinking and planning. Uh, so until next time, um, keep it going. I'm Kate from Cater, and I'll see you later.